Calibrating the ear is a process. It takes a long time and it's not going to happen overnight. You ever see that movie, The Matrix with Keanu Reeves, where they plug into the computer and they learn skills like that? I wish we could do that with tuning. I wish I could, we could just plug our students into computers and all of a sudden they and then they, they know how to tune uh, automatically just like Keanu Reeves learns Kung Fu in a matter of seconds. But this isn't The Matrix. Or is it The Matrix? And all simulation theory aside, we have to understand that calibrating the ear is a very long process for students, and this is not going to take days, it's going to take months. And we have to be okay with that, and they have to be okay with that. Again, this goes to the values part of the technique hierarchy. We have to relate these things to their values and make sure that students understand that progress is incremental and that they are just needing to improve a little bit every day. Just 1% every day if we do that a little bit more and a little bit more one percent better tuning every day better every day every day at the end of the year the way it adds up we're going to be 37 times more in tune than we were at the beginning of the year that's just basic math as directors we have to insist on quality tuning and we have to fight that battle every day in the classroom so that they're getting that one percent every day we want to do it in a positive way and we want to have that growth mindset in mind when we're teaching and when the students are learning they should also have the growth mindset. I want to talk a little bit about beats in the sound. How to hear beats and what causes them. When two pitches are being played at the same time and one is just a little lower than the other one we start to hear beats in the sound. It starts to sound like wah 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 and so so what is causing that effect? What in physics is making that happen? Well, we see a waveform, and waveforms, they're not actually what's taking place. You know, sound waves are actually compression of the air. So it's just the, our visual representation of frequency isn't, isn't exactly what's going on. But through that process of visualization, we can kind of see why we're hearing the beats in the sound. Now, if you buy some headphones, like let's say you get a pair of AirPods, I think that the latest AirPods have something like nine different microphones on the outside that are hearing everything from the outside and then projecting other sound waves to cancel the noise that's coming in. They call this technology active noise canceling. Passive noise canceling would be to seal the ear so that we can't hear what's going on outside. Active sound canceling is firing back sound waves that are going to cancel the sound waves coming in. So if you think of the frequencies going on and you have a wave going this way and you want to cancel that wave, well, you need a wave that's shaped in the opposite way. So if the peak is here and the trough is there, it's going to cancel and they just kind of go and cancel each other out. So if you're looking at a sound wave like that, you can understand it. Oh, here are the points where they're canceling, but why are they canceling? Well, it's because there's compression in the air this way and the other one is expanded. So you have the compression plus the expanded air, put that together and you have neutral sound. This is also why out-of-tune orchestras have trouble playing with loud dynamics is because these beats are making them sound softer. And if you ever do full orchestra and you're having trouble with your brass overpowering your strings, maybe it's time to work on tuning. So with the beats and the sound, we have these sound waves that are traveling at a similar speed, but every once in a while, we have a, an instance where we have a peak and a trough at the same time and then those waves cancel each other at regular intervals and that's why we hear wah, 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 wah because of that sound cancellation. Learning to hear beats in the sound and detect beats in the music are one way that students and directors both can hear if something is out of tune and it helps to calibrate the ear. And we want to make sure that we're playing appropriate music for the student to be able to hear whether or not those beats are occurring if the notes are moving too quickly, it's very difficult to hear if it's in tune. So it's good to play some slower music that has a lot of whole notes, longer half notes, slower tempo pieces, so they can hear what's going on and they can develop that tuning in context. If there's so much left hand technique that they're working on fingering and all this kind of stuff, shifting, whatever, whatever the, the technique is that's advanced for them, and they haven't mastered tuning yet, we run into issues where they're not going to be able to play in tune because they're thinking about things that are more advanced for their tuning and so make sure that you program music that's comfortable to play. And again this goes back to our hierarchy of techniques because you know these style things are above tuning in the order of importance. And also on that hierarchy it's important to understand 
that quality tone is needed first before we reach quality tuning. Can I find examples of orchestra with bad tone that have good tone? Yes, I can, but they're rare. They're not the norm. The norm is bad tone and bad tuning. Or you could say the norm is good tone and good tuning, but having bad tone and good tuning is exceptionally rare from my experience as an adjudicator, clinician, or consultant. Maybe I'm wrong and your mileage may vary, but for me as a teacher, that's what works for me in the classroom, is building up that tone first, then they can hear what they're doing, then the intonation is the next layer. Again, think of the word intonation. It has tone in the word. Don't fact check me on that though to see if that's actually the entomology of intonation. Just trust me, it sounds good. Another great way to calibrate the ear is to listen to music. And that's something that is a great thing to do in the classroom. Uh, some of our beginner classes here in this school district, they have fun Fridays where as the students are coming in the room to unpack, the classroom teacher has some kind of video on where usually they're playing pops music or something, but they're hearing uh, a string orchestra play or a, str a small string ensemble play with very quality tuning so that they can start calibrating their ears. Oh, that's what quality tune sounds like, and that that's something that I could learn to do. Same thing, I think, with us directors. It's always good to listen to the finest orchestras that we can we can get with the best quality recordings that we can get. If you can have a wired connection with some good headphones or some good speakers and you're listening to music at a high bit rate or a high quality flack audio sound, a CD or something that's not an ultra compressed MP3 that we're getting off the iTunes store, that's really going to help you hear quality tuning. And every once in a while, maybe not so great tuning, every once in a while even the best players play out of tune, it happens. You gotta understand the process when these orchestras are recording. A lot of times they have no rehearsal time, they just pass out the music and go and they get what they get. If they're that good, they can do that. You know, the, the days of Toscanini going down with the NBC orchestra and just spending days just mastering the stuff, those days are over. You know, for better or for worse, we have to have players that can just play anything on the spot now. Let's just think of your chromatic tuner, you know, from A to B flat. So you have 100 cents in between A and B flat in an equal temperament system. And these cents are a logarithmic unit, although we're visualizing this linearly. Why is it logarithmic? Well, it's because frequency doubles at every octave. So you have A440, you go down an octave, it's 220, you go up an octave, it's 880. It's not linear, it's logarithmic. None of that really matters though, so don't worry about it. Uh, all you have to do is understand that between A and B flat, there are infinite numbers of frequencies that you can get from one to another. So you have a student that's trying to, to play and then tune the fine tuner and play and then tune the fine tuner or whatever, or you have a cellist that bows and then messes with this and bows and then messes with this. They're trying to pick a point here, they're trying to pick a point there, and this pointillistic method is never going to be able to develop accuracy because there's infinite numbers of possibilities between A and B flat. The most efficient way to adjust your tuning is to start from one point, play and tune, and slide into the correct pitch. This way, or up this way. We also need to make sure that when we're tuning students, especially individually, that other students are staying checked in. This gives them the opportunity to listen and hear what's going on. And I promise you, they're going to develop their tuning a lot better from listening to other students tune than when they do it themselves. When they're tuning themselves and you know, you're over there helping them tune, you're messing with their fine tune, you're messing with their finger, whatever, you know, you're in their face or maybe not in their face, but the spotlight's on them. They freak out deer in the headlights. Well, uh, uh, uh. They're not really learning how to tune at that moment. At that moment, other people should be learning how to tune based on what they're doing and hearing that adjustment and change. So all of their ears are now calibrating. So again, calibrating the ear is a process. It's something that we need to take time and do. It's something that we have to insist upon, but also have that growth mindset so that we can continue to get just a little bit better every single day and understand that this could take months.